welcome to massive open online course on fluid flow operations. So, this is the lecture 21 under module 8 as a part 2 uh, the drag lift and cavitation uh, will be discussed in the previous lecture we have discussed uh, regarding the drag and uh, how this drag uh, is conceptually uh, established and also uh, the different uh, variables that affects on this uh, drag coefficients uh, for different shape of particles. In this lecture, uh, we will discuss uh, about the lift when uh, flow around the body and what are the components of the uh, lift and uh, what are the different uh, effects uh, on lift uh, based on the body shapes and also what will be the cavitation and how it is developed and uh, what are the different aspects of the cavitation will be discussed in this lecture. Now, if we consider that uh, the flow around a body we have discussed that when a uh, flow uh, is uh, placed in a uh, by uniform flow that is develops in a thin layer along the body surface. In that case uh, you will see there will be a uh, change of velocity because of the viscous effect and also uh, it is seen that there will be a flow separation uh, from the uh, behind of the body and uh, at the beginning you will see whenever uh, the fluid will be stuck at that uh, uh, stagnant point from that there will be separation of the fluid uh, into two parts uh, in the upper layer and uh, lower layer, layer of the objects. And in that case from the upper layer there will be separation of the fluid uh, because of the drag effect and also viscosity uh, and also other uh, flow regimes effect is there. And of course, there will be a shape and uh, that shape depends on the orientation of the object and uh, what exactly uh, it will affect on the uh, drag coefficient as well as other uh, uh, force that actions on the uh, uh, body. Also, we can say that the flow separates behind the body that will discharge a uh, wake uh, with eddies. So, in that case the shape of the eddies would be different for different flow pattern and uh, also it is seen that, that uh, there will be a formation of the circulation uh, zone behind this uh, cell and that circulation uh, cell will be called as eddy and sometimes the shape of this eddy will be formed a certain shape of wake and that uh, uh, will change the discharge of the uh, fluid element from the behind of this uh, body. So, in that case uh, you will see there will be a, a force acting on that and there will be some components uh, of this force uh, in the different directions, but we are considering here only two directional components here in the uh, shape uh, whatever uh, the components is coming from the shear force and as well as the pressure force that will be considered here uh, in this case. Now, uh, we have already discussed that the flow around a cylinder and a flat plate uh, that is shown in uh, figure here. In that case, uh, the flow uh, from an upstream point A uh, is, is uh, stopped at a point B on the body surface with its uh, velocity uh, decreasing to 0 here at this uh, position and here in this uh, figure shown and uh, this is uh, called the stagnation point. And in this case, uh, from this stagnation point uh, from this upper and lower uh, parts of these objects, the flow will be divided into two parts. And uh, for a cylinder, you will see the flow separates at a point C uh, by in that case uh, uh, producing a wake with uh, a radius there. So, uh, in that case uh, uh, the shape of that uh, eddies that will form because of the turbulence and also energy distribution behind this object and for which there will be circulation cell and uh, circulation cell uh, whatever uh, it will be formed that will be uh, circulates uh, with the opposite uh, uh, direction of this uh, flow compared to each other. And also you will see that uh, if we uh, consider that uh, how the drag and lift, uh, lift uh, are actually uh, realized or uh, produced uh, conceptually. In that case we have already discussed in the previous class that whenever body is uh, released uh, uh, in a uh, flow. In that case uh, the body will uh, actually uh, uh, acquire a force uh, from the surrounding fluid uh, whenever it is placed in the flow of fluid in that particular direction. Now, in that case for a flat plate uh, it will realize as a force only in the downstream direction uh, when it is placed in the flow direction. And uh, however, a wing realizes uh, the force uh, R uh, as shown in the figure here in this case this is R 
this uh, that uh, inclined uh, to the flow at a certain angle that uh, may be uh, at a angle theta. So, in that case uh, it will uh, have two components in the uh, flow direction as well as normal to the flow direction. In general the force R acting on a body is resolved into these components that will be uh, represented by this uh, uh, drag and also uh, as referred by uh, lift and in that case drag is represented by uh, D whereas, this uh, lift will be uh, considered as a L here. So, in that case D will be in the flow direction U uh, and uh, lift will be uh, in the uh, flow direction normal to the uh, U, U means velocity of the fluid that we have already discussed how. So, in this direction see here the direction of the uh, lift and uh, direction of the drag is uh, shown here in the uh, picture. Now, uh, if we uh, consider uh, the lift how it will be developed in that case the lift uh, uh, it will be the integration over the whole body surface of the component in the direction that will be normal to the flow velocity u. Now, if we consider that in this surface there will be a small uh, area d a and on this uh, area of d a there will be a force acting in this direction as well as uh, in this direction. Now, you will see in this direction the force is acting that will be called as shear stress or if we uh, multiply uh, this uh, shear stress by its uh, by area small area then it will be called shearing uh, force. Whereas, in that uh, normal direction of this uh, shearing force it will be called as pressure force. Now, if we have the components of the pressure force as well as uh, shear force in this uh, flow directions, then we will have uh, this P into d a it is uh, in this flow direction it will be P d a into cos theta. Whereas, uh, in this flow direction what should be the component of this shearing force it will be uh, tau d a into uh, uh, sin theta. So, here we can say that the lift L p which is the integration over the whole body surface of the component in the direction that will be normal to the flow velocity u and that will be represented by this L. Now, this L it will be uh, may be uh, of uh, that is frictional force or it will be may be of uh, that is called pressure force. So, two components uh, will sum up this total uh, lift force in this case. So, we are getting uh, this uh, uh, normal directions of this flow what will be the flow components that is coming out from the shearing force as well as pressure force are it will be represented as uh, what is that L p that will be equal to uh, integration of p d a into sin theta whereas, uh, uh, for uh, shearing force it will be as uh, integration over this area as tau d a into cos theta. So, we can have this uh, total lift force uh, by summing of these two components of this uh, lift uh, uh, that is contributed by pressure as well as uh, friction these two uh, components. So, we can have this the lift L on a body it will be the sum of the pressure lift L p and the friction lift L f whose proportions will be varying with the shape of the body. So, we have already discussed this part. So, this is the conceptual part of this uh, how this lift and as well as this shearing force will be developed here. Now, let us consider uh, a cylinder that will be placed in a uniform flow u and it will rotates at angular velocity omega, but without flow separation in this case as shown here as shown here in the p figure that uh, if it is a cylindrical surface and in that case flow will be flowing over this uh, cylindrical surface and at the surface you will see this uh, liquid or fluid will have uh, the angular velocity uh, omega, but there uh, there will be no separation of this uh, flow whenever it will uh, exhibit uh, uh, with a uh, velocity omega. Now, in this case the fluid on the cylinder surface that will moves at a circular velocity u should be is equal to r into uh, r 0 into omega whereas, r 0 will be the radius of the cylinder. And in that case the fluid uh, sticking to the uh, cylinder surface that will owe of course, the viscosity of the fluid. Now, the uh, flow velocity at a given point on the cylinder you will see uh, at an angle theta at point p as shown here in the figure that uh, there will be a tangential 
uh, velocity uh, that will be denoted by v theta as well as uh, the velocity uh, that will be caused by this uh, what is that angular uh, momentum. So, there will be a two components of this flow uh, in that uh, direction here in the tangential direction of this uh, surface at point p that will be summation of v theta and u. Now, what should be the v theta? We have already uh, told that that the v theta will be is equal to 2 u sin theta and uh, then tangential velocity at point p it will be v p that will be equal to v theta plus u and that will be equal to 2 u sin theta plus r 0 omega. So, this will be your tangential velocity component at point p whenever a flow will be uh, flowing uh, through a cylinder and uh, at the surface of the cylinder at point here uh, there will be a angular velocity of uh, omega and with this omega and what should be the that is tangential velocity. So, it will be as uh, v theta and uh, what is that uh, u. So, uh, by equation 2 you can get this tangential velocity here. Now, if we consider the pressure of the uniform flow as p infinity then the pressure at a given point on the cylinder surface it will be p. Now, what should be the p value then you can of course, have from this uh, Bernoulli's equation here uh, from these two points here p as well as at this point here. Uh, so, uh, what should be the pressure at this point and what should be the pressure at this point if the pressure at p is p then we can uh, apply this Bernoulli's equation as here then it will be uh, p infinity plus rho u into u square that will be is equal to at this point it will be p plus rho y 2 into here u square it will be the summation of that tangential velocity 2 u sin theta plus r uh, 0 omega that will be angular velocity that square. So, after simplification we can have this p minus p infinity by rho u square by 2 that will be is equal to 1 minus uh, 2 u sin theta plus r 0 omega by u whole square. So, this equation 4 will give you the pressure distribution over the surface whenever fluid will be flowing over the surface of the uh, cylinder. So, uh, this equation uh, of course, important for calculating the pressure how pressure will be distributed and based on that how energy will be distributed over the surface there. And, uh, Again, uh, if we consider then if we have this uh, pressure distribution or pressure there, then you will be able to calculate what should be the uh, lift force there. So, in that case the lift L acting on the unit width of the cylinder if we consider can be obtained from uh, the unit width of the cylinder surface by integrating the component in the y direction of the force due to the force that is p minus p infinity acting on the minute area and uh, it will be r 0 into d theta as here L should be is equal to 2 uh, uh, that is uh, integration that is minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 that will be minus of p minus p infinity r 0 d theta into sin theta. So, this will be your that is the uh, lift component for the pressure force. And from this pressure force if we have this component in the normal direction and after integration and then we can get the whole lift force for the whole surface of the cylinder. And uh, after simplification and integration here we are getting this finally, L should be equal to 2 pi r 0 u into rho u. So, equation number 5 will give you the lift force uh, uh, that will be contributed by the pressure in the cylinder. Now, what should be the circulation uh, around the cylinder surface that will be calculated if you know the uh, circulation velocity that will be r 0 into u in that case uh, here 2 pi r 0 into u that will be your circulation around. So, in this case this is simply by r 0 omega that circulation finally, uh, it will be as 2 pi r 0 u and then lift will be is equal to rho u into uh, circulation this rho u this is the uh, definition for this uh, lift force as per circulation here this lift the uh, here in this case uh, it will be reason uh, for the baseball tennis ball or uh, golf ball curves uh, slices if it is uh, spinning there. Now, this type of this equation number 7 it is called that uh, Kutta 
Zhukovsky equation uh, from which you can calculate what be the lift force if you know the circulation of the flow uh, around the cylinder surface and if you know the free stream velocity there. Now, uh, if we consider the wing or aerofoil or blade. So, in that case if, if the body is so manufactured as to make the lift that will be larger than the drag then it is called a wing or aerofoil or blade. The, the shape of a wing section is called an aerofoil section. Here uh, the figure is shown in the slides the shape of a wings that section is called the aerofoil section and the line that connecting uh, the uh, leading edge with the trailing edge is called the cord and its length is called the cord length. Here this to this length it is called that is this to this from this uh, here it is called the line connecting the leading edge with the trailing edge it will be called as cord length. Now, the line connecting the mid points of the upper and lower faces of the aerofoil section will be called as uh, this will be called as uh, camber. Uh, so, this uh, camber is nothing but this what is the center line and what will be the edge line here what will be the distance between these two edge line and center line to be called as the camber. Now, uh, other part of this uh, that is aerofoil section is there here it will get uh, if you consider a point here then uh, in which direction this lift will be there and in which direction the left uh, uh, that is drag force will be acting there and also what will be the thickness for that and uh, camber line is there and uh, if the velocity is acting on the uh, surface of this uh, uh, aerofoil in this uh, direction as shown here which makes uh, to the central uh, to the uh, what is that cord line as alpha then how the lift force will be calculated in that case uh, there you have to consider. Now, in this case the height of the camber line from the cord is called uh, camber and the thickness uh, of wing as measured vertically to the camber or cord uh, is called the thickness and here is shown in uh, figure. Uh, the angle alpha between the cord and the flow direction u is called the angle of attack. If wing width is b and the maximum projection area of the wing is a then b square by a which will be called as aspect ratio. If the length of the cord is l for an uh, oblong wing uh, the aspect ratio becomes b square by a and uh, that will be equal to b by uh, l where a is equal to b into l. So, in this way we can calculate what should be the camber, what should be the thickness, what should be the angle of attack and what should be the aspect ratio and uh, this uh, you have to calculate uh, based on this uh, definition and uh, then uh, we will be able to calculate what the lift and as well as drag and moment m that will be acting on this aerofile section. Now, if the lift l drag d and moment m that is moment about the wing leading s or the point on the cord L by 4 uh, from the leading edge that will be acting on the wing that ex expressed respectively for the unit width by the following equation here as given in equation number 8. So, in that case L should be will be equals to as per definition earlier we have got this, this will be uh, proportional to the uh, projectional area uh, as well as what is that the kinetic energy of the fluid that would be uh, flowing uh, through this. Uh, uh, surface of the uh, aerofoil section and uh, then uh, uh, in that case uh, we can have this L will be equal to uh, C L into L into rho u square by uh, 2. Here uh, L is only for this area uh, is calculated here unit width will be considered here. So, in that case uh, we can have the projectional area as L. So, uh, the proportionality constant is called uh, C L the C L uh, of course, it will be depending on the Reynolds number of the fluid flow and also drag force it will be as per that definition again C D into L into rho e square by 2 and uh, what will be the momentum force that will be equal to again it will be depending on that kinetic energy and uh, also uh, this uh, what is the geometry that is uh, cross sectional area here L square in this case. So, C M it will be there. Uh, is the uh, proportionality constant. So, C L, C D and C M are the what is that uh, lift coefficient, drag coefficient and the momentum coefficient you can say. 
the coefficient this C L C D and C M are called the lift coefficient, drag coefficient and moment coefficient. Of course, those will be determined by the arrow foil section and uh, the Mach number and the Reynolds number there. This uh, of course, the whether uh, the flow will be uh, above the sound velocity or not that will be very important if it is more than uh, sound velocity then what will be the Mach number and based on which this uh, drag coefficient and momentum coefficient will be considered. And the wing characteristics is the indicated by the velocity of L, C, D, C, M for the angle of attack alpha in this case. Another important uh, uh, section is that zero lift angle what is that. Now, uh, the lift coefficient uh, reaches to zero uh, at a certain angle of attack if we consider as alpha uh, that is called zero lift angle and as the angle of attack uh, increases from the zero lift angle uh, the lift coefficient C L will increase uh, in a straight line to a maximum value as shown in figure here. So, in this case you will see how the C L C D and uh, what is the C M that is momentum coefficient are varying uh, with respect to this angle. Here you will see if we uh, increase the angle in that case uh, uh, you will see that uh, uh, the lift coefficient will be uh, increased and uh, at around 16 degree angle you will see there will be a maximum uh, lift whereas, uh, beyond that there will be a change of this uh, lift, lift coefficient. Whereas, you will see C D at that uh, around 16 degree angle it will be increasing whereas, uh, beyond this uh, uh, before this 16 angle that means, if uh, angle less than 16 degree then in that case the C D will almost uh, remain constant uh, and also momentum uh, coefficient also will remain almost constant, but uh, the momentum coefficient will decrease beyond this uh, 12 degree and uh, it will increase for uh, drag coefficient beyond this 12 degree also. So, we can say that uh, interesting point that uh, at the zero lift angle means what at the zero degree you will see uh, the lift coefficient reaches to zero and that will be uh, represented at the zero lift angle. So, here in this case uh, uh, when this uh, this lift coefficient will be 0 that is minus 4 degree it is seen that if I have this minus 4 degree of uh, uh, angle then you will see the lift coefficient will be 0. So, that angle will be called as that lift uh, that is 0 lift angle there. And uh, also as the angle of the attack increases uh, from the zero lift angle the lift coefficient increases in a straight line to a maximum value it will be up to 16 degree and beyond that it will decrease. Uh, another important phenomena of this uh, that is arrow file section you will see that uh, that is called stall phenomena. If the angle of attack uh, further increases uh, the increase in C L. Uh, uh, gradually slow down uh, here in this uh, case you will see there in the figure uh, and uh, it will recess a maximum value due to the uh, flow separates uh, on the upper surface uh, of the wing by high value of angle of attack. Uh, this phenomena is called stall. So, in this case you will see here interesting point that flow how this uh, it will be separated from this wing and uh, you will see uh, and wing uh, by high value of uh, angle of attack in that case it will be more than 16 degree and the separation if this separation is happened this phenomena is called the stall. Now, angle alpha at which the C L reaches a maximum uh, is the stalling angle it will be called as stalling angle that is maximum that is 16 degree here it will be coming as this 16 uh, that is C L here it will be maximum. So, at 16 degree uh, angle you will see this uh, C L will be maximum. So, this 16 degree angle it will be called stalling angle at this angle you will see the flow will separates from the upper surface of the wing as shown in your figure. And uh, this maximum value of this uh, lift coefficient is the maximum lift coefficient at this uh, particular stalling angle. So, we can have this this is the phenomena where we can say that flow will be separated from the upper surface of the uh, wing of this uh, aerofoil section 
and uh, there will be a certain angle at which you can get this flow separation that phenomena is called stall. Whereas, the angle at which this uh, stalling effect is uh, seen it is called stalling angle and uh, at this stalling angle uh, you will get the maximum value of lift coefficient. So, we are getting the stalling angle as per this uh, diagram here as shown in figure that 16 degree is your stalling angle whereas, the stalling effect will be happen uh, when uh, that is C L value is maximum of 1.6. So, we can have this stalling effect uh, because of the separation of the flow from the wing. Similarly, another important point is that how characteristic curve of a wing that is lift drag curve can be obtained here. If we uh, uh, consider that wing characteristic uh, in such way that uh, if we plot this uh, C L curve uh, by putting C D on the abscess and C L on the ordinate, what will happen you will see that uh, there will be angle of attack that will maximize the lift drag ratio of C L by C D. That uh, here in that case uh, C L by C D ratio would be maximum uh, at point here 0 0.5 at this here. So, this will be when this maximum this uh, lift drag ratio will be obtained that will be uh, uh, represented by this characteristic curve here. So, this characteristic curve you will see at a certain angle this you can have at a certain angle of this uh, what is that that is uh, called angle of attack you will see uh, uh, this uh, C L by C D if it is maximum it is coming that uh, angle that angle it will be represented as the characteristic curve angle or you can say leap drag angle. So, that leap drag angle will be within uh, uh, in between that uh, 0 to uh, what is that uh, 3 degree in between there somewhere you will get because we are getting here uh, in this curves the if we uh, increase the angle there will be increase of C L and at the end it will be maximum here whereas, the C D will be somewhere. So, when this C L by C D will be maximum that angle will be considered as the uh, maximum attack angle for the maximum ratio of C L by C D. And uh, you will see there will be a minimum value of C D at which you can get this uh, from this curve also and uh, this uh, minimum phenomena of C D will get that you will see there will be a maximum lift, lift there. And also why a wing produces a lift then and it will be due to a circulatory flow uh, that is produced just like uh, for a rotating cylinder. And in the case of a wing section uh, the circulatory flow is that is produced because the trailing edge is uh, here shaped. Now, uh, in that case uh, the wing moves from a stationary state initially in that case owing to its uh, behavior as potential flow and a rear stagnation point that will develop at point A. And uh, also you will see that uh, uh, because of that the flow develops into a flow running around the trailing is B. And uh, since the trailing is, is uh, sharp there at that point and uh, the flow is unable to run round the wing surface, but separates from it producing a vortex there. And this vortex moves backward that will be being driven by the main flow. So, here in this case you will see we are getting this three picture A, B and C. You will see very interesting that there will be a circulatory flow around this wing just like a rotating cylinder that we got that eddies and the circulation cell. And in this case you will see in this case of wing uh, section this uh, circulatory flow uh, actually uh, produced uh, because of the trailing edge. This trailing edge sometimes is so sharp in that uh, the uh, smaller circulation cell will produce near about that uh, edge. So, in that case uh, that uh, wing uh, moves from a stationary a uh, state initially and uh, owing to its behavior as potential flow and uh, you will see there will be formation of rear stagnation point uh, at point A as shown figure here. And you will see uh, since this uh, trailing edge is sharp uh, in that case uh, sometimes uh, however, the flow is unable to 
uh, run round the wing surface, but this flow will separates from it uh, where uh, the uh, vortices are forms uh, near about that wing surface. And uh, this forms uh, sometimes will moves backward uh, that will be driven by the main flow. Now, another important that uh, we got that uh, some phenomena or uh, that is uh, by uh, given by this uh, Zukowski's equation there will be some hypothesis and that hypothesis will come uh, based on the formation of vortex that is uh, formed uh, starting uh, uh, from the uh, that is wing surface uh, edge. So, in that case the flow on the upper surface of the wing at actually is drawn towards the training edge which itself develops into a stagnation point there. Now, as shown in figure you will see there will be a uh, the uh, formation of uh, vortex that is uh, started uh, from the end of the edge of the aerofoil section or wing in that case, but, uh, but a small uh, circulation cell itself it will be forming from the stagnation point itself. So, you will see that the flow on the upper surface of the wing whenever it will be drawn towards the trailing edge. In that case the uh, small small circulation cell small circulation cell it will be broken down and it will be forms in such way that after getting the reduced pressure uh, 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 at this uh, edge there will be formation of uh, that is uh, uh, bigger uh, that is uh, what is that uh, circulation cell and there you will see that eddies will be coming to each other and formation of big eddies there and that sometimes that will be coalescence and uh, the circulation cell will be enlarged there. So, uh, in that case uh, the stagnation point sometimes it will forms that uh, whenever the circulation cell will get uh, struck somewhere in the wings. So, that stagnation point will be forming. Now, uh, when flow is struck immediately at the edge that is beginning edge there will be a formation of stagnant point. And if suppose there is a that is the from the edge points that is uh, uh, the uh, what is the sharpened end of this wing there sometimes you will see there will be some stagnation point their formation and over which there will be a flow that will uh, moving uh, beyond that uh, because of the circulation and since the circulations are opposite in uh, directions. So, they will form some uh, stagnation zone uh, over the point here. So, in this case you will see here this direction in this direction where this direction in this. So, whatever here in this uh, direction there will be a some stagnation region here also there will be some stagnation region there. So, in that case uh, the stagnation point will form because of that how it will be uh, forming the vortex and the angle angular velocity that is phenomena that important point is that uh, if the angular uh, velocity is uh, such say that two angular that is circulation cell are coming to each other and they are forming the different direction of that angular portion then there will be a formation some uh, stagnation zone. Now, as one vortex is produced the another vortex of the equal strength may be produced and because of that the flow stream as a whole should be in a net non rotary movement that is why. So, that is why you can say that there were two circulation cells two what is that vortexes will be forming uh, the stagnation zone in such way that they will oppositely circulate to each other and that region that is uh, what is that gap between that uh, circulation cell there will be formation of uh, stagnation zone sometimes. So, therefore, a circulation is produced against the startup vortex as if uh, another vortex of the equal strength in counter rotation had developed. So, around the wing section. So, that is why uh, uh, this uh, circulation this stagnation point will be uh, uh, forming just by rotation of the vortex in the opposite direction. The former vortex which will be called is starting of vortex because it is left at the starting point and the later assumed vortex is a wing bound vortex and in that case the situation where the flow runs of the sharp trailing edge of a wing as started above it is called the uh, Kutta condition or Jokowski's hypothesis. So, this phenomena it is uh, actually uh, based on this vortex phenomena and it is represented or it is the, uh, first actually observed by this Kutta and uh, it is called the Kutta condition or uh, sometimes Zukowski's hypothesis it is called. 
Now, another important that what is this cascade, cascade is another important point how lift is uh, actually affected by uh, this cascade phenomena here in this case. The blades of a blower, the compressor, water wheel, steam turbine or gas turbine of the axial flow type are distributed radially in plane around the shaft and the blade sections of the same shape are found arranged at a certain spacing as shown in figure this is called cascade. And the action of a cascade is to change the flow direction with a small loss by using the necessary stagger angle. Here in this case you will see uh, u 1 and u 2 uh, it is shown that uh, in this uh, figure that here uh, the velocity is at uh, infinity in front and behind the cascade and also you will see uh, here uh, this is u 2 here u 2 this is u 1. So, uh, these are the velocities uh, at infinity in front and behind the cascade and alpha 1 will be equals to inlet angle uh, angle of velocity u 1 to axial direction in this case and alpha 2 here as shown in your figure that uh, it will be exit angle that is the angle of velocity u 2 to axial direction and l uh, that will be uh, chord length and uh, also you will see that uh, t there will be a certain space of this cascade. So, it will be space between blades or cascades you will see and l by t that is called uh, solidity and beta angle is there whereas, this axis will make with a vertical uh, direction it will be called as stagger angle and uh, theta is equal to alpha 1 minus alpha 2 it is uh, denoted by turning angle of flow. Uh, so, uh, we are having this cascade phenomena uh, how uh, this uh, different angles of this uh, flow velocity will be with this axis of the uh, cascade there. Now, uh, if we consider the lift force acting on this cascade how it will be there the lift acting on a blade is uh, that is rho u in infinity into uh, gamma uh, where rho is the uh, density of the fluid and uh, u infinity is the uniform velocity free stream velocity and uh, gamma is called circulation. And uh, in this case uh, the circulation around a blade in a cascade uh, that will be affected by the other blades giving less lift compared to a solitary uh, blade. And also for the same blade uh, you will see uh, set uh, that is uh, setting the lifts of a uh, solitary blade uh, and a cascade blade to L 0 and L respectively in that case. So, we can have this uh, interference uh, coefficient uh, denoted by k that will be equal to L by L 0. So, uh, this will be a function of L by t of course, this uh, what is that uh, chord length uh, to the uh, thickness of this uh, blade there or spacing of this blade and also staggering angle. Uh, so, in that case uh, it is near 1 whenever L by t will be equal to 0 0.5 or less. So, this interference coefficient is important to design this blade angle uh, uh, blade and also uh, uh, for the cascade type and then uh, what will be the positions for that uh, blade based on this uh, thickness and as well as that uh, uh, chord length and uh, based on this velocity how it will be calculated and it will be designed here. Now, next part of this uh, what is the cavitation? Now, cavitation you will see uh, it is important because sometimes whenever fluid will be flowing over this uh, solid object you will see there will be a certain change of uh, pressure over the surface. So, in that case uh, uh, if a section of the body placed in liquid and you will see that if the local pressure is uh, decreased to uh, its uh, vapor uh, pressure or uh, saturation pressure of the liquid you can say that uh, uh, liquid uh, instantaneously will uh, boils. And in that case uh, there will be a formation of bubbles that will be called cavity and this can happen when the liquid flows through the valves and elbows or turbine blades and also uh, in that case the when the pressure becomes sufficiently low and this phenomena. Uh, is called the cavitation. So, basically the cavitation happened when uh, you will see uh, if uh, in any section uh, the uh, in the body 
uh, that will be placed in the liquid uh, if the local pressure is reduced to the vapor pressure of the liquid uh, then you will see uh, there will be a formation of bubbles and uh, uh, that bubbles will sometimes uh, hamper the flow and also the valve uh, and elbows and turbines whenever fluid will be flowing through these sections uh, through this uh, small uh, uh, bodies. Uh, so, in that case uh, suddenly the pressure will uh, sufficiently will become low and there inside that valve or elbows there will be formation of uh, cavity or uh, that is bubble and that will obstruct the flow of phenomena and also the what is that uh, there will be a different uh, what is that uh, loss of the energy and also you will see there will be a corrosion erosion and also that there will be breakage of the or uh, that is malfunctioning of these uh, valves or uh, other equipments there. Now, in that case uh, if suppose the gas dissolves in the liquid in proportion to the pressure as per Henry's law. As the liquid pressure decreases, so the dissolved gas separates from the liquid into bubbles and even before the saturation pressure is reached there. Now, if these bubbles are uh, that is conveyed downstream where the pressure is higher, they are suddenly squeezed and abnormally high pressure will be developed there. Now, at that point there will be formation of noise, vibration will be there and also erosion uh, will be there neighboring the surface and also you will see uh, there will be formation of small holes in the diameter and it will be sometimes it will be dipped also uh, because of this variation of this pressure and formation of the bubble there. And uh, you will see uh, sometimes this uh, blades of the pump or water wheel or the propeller of the boat sometimes destroyed by such phenomena. So, they can develop uh, on liquid that will be carrying uh, through the pipelines or on the hydraulic devices in which a uh, contraction or sometimes expansion will be there. So, because of which that in the veins of a uh, centrifugal pump near the tips of the propellers there will be a formation of bubbles and in that case there will be a formation of hydrofoils and the uh, torpedoes there. And it can actually damage the, uh, uh, the propellers and the uh, steel shafts due to the vibrations on uh, sheaves and cause a pump to cease to the function properly. So, that is why I told that that if the cavitation is formed it will sometimes malfunction in its work condition. So, uh, in that case uh, you have to consider this uh, effect of this uh, vapor pressure uh, at which condition this vapor pressure will be forming and you have to know the pressure distribution whenever fluid will be flowing through that. You have to see whether this pressure is suddenly uh, becoming low or not. Whenever it will be uh, becoming low as this boiling point pressure then uh, there will be a problem of this uh, flowing of uh, flow uh, through this uh, five sections and even also other hydraulic devices systems. So, in that case you have to design the devices in such a way that when uh, that uh, the range of the pressure you have to consider and also the uh, when this uh, uh, pressure will form that uh, cavitation and whether that cavitation can be avoided or not by just uh, changing the uh, design phenomena, design criteria based on this uh, pressure development. Now, what is that super cavitation it is also important. Now, if you are considering an aerofoil, so when an aerofoil section is placed uh, in a flow of liquid, in that case you will see there will be a pressure distribution on it surface as shown in figure here. There will be a pressure distribution as shown here this is by red line it is that the pressure distribution over there. Now, as the cavity grows if suppose there is a formation of cavity for this uh, lowering pressure here what will happen the cavity whenever it will be growing up then the upper pressure characteristics curve lowers the vibration etcetera. So, in that case the cavity grows the upper pressure characteristics curve in that case it will lower and uh, also vibration also will grow there. So, when the liquid pressure is low and the flow velocity is large the cavity grows further. So, when it grows beyond the twice the cord length you will see important that if this cavity if this cavity is uh, larger than the cord length that is if it is twice the cord length the flow st will stabilize and uh, with the reduction of noise and vibration and this situation will be called as super cavitation. So, you have to 
form this cavitation if is there any uh, cavitation is formed then you have to make it twice of the cord length. So, that that the flow will be stabilized and there will be a, a reduction of the noise and also the reduction of the vibration and uh, so this is the phenomena based on which you can design this arrow coil where then you can get this uh, uh, minimum or you can solve the most negligible amount of noise and vibration there. So, you have to calculate the supercritical condition and this supercritical uh, pressure or super uh, uh, that is uh, cavitation pressure uh, based on which uh, what uh, there will be no formation of cavity there. Now, where then this super cavitation can be applied you will see whenever you are going to design a rocket propulsion. So, in that case this super cavitation uh, phenomena is considered. So, rocket propulsion can be used for sustained operation with the possibility of tapping high pressure gas to root the object's noise in order to enhance the cavitation bubble. An example of the rocket propulsion in uh, Russia that they have developed that it will be V A 111 that is uh, say scabble uh, super cavitating uh, torpedo uh, here as shown in figure. And uh, also you will see that uh, in 2004 German weapons manufacturer uh, that is uh, Dale uh, BGT uh, defense announced their own uh, super cavitating torpedo. And, uh, they have designed this torpedo based on this uh, super uh, cavitation condition. Also in United States uh, 1994 Navy uh, began uh, developing a, a sea mine that is clearance systems uh, invented by Sea Tech Defense Corporation. Uh, it is known as Ramix that is the rapid airborne mine clearance system based on the uh, super cavitating projectiles uh, stable in both air and water. So, uh, super cavitation actually applied for this designing this uh, rocket and even other weapon uh, manufacture in uh, the defense uh, uh, section. Now, other applications it can also be useful in the destruction of kidney stones by acoustic intensity in the order of uh, what is that 1000 to 10000 uh, watt per centimeter square by ultrasound which is sufficiently high so that cavitation generally happens. So, in this case you have to produce some small small uh, bubbles uh, by this acoustic intensity and that uh, uh, will be used for breaking up that uh, kidney stones. And also it is useful for ultrasonic cleaning devices there and also it is used for improving the performance of the uh, torpedoes. Now, uh, how to calculate this uh, degree of cavitation, when that cavitation will be occurred and uh, what will be the condition for that, when I uh, we should not actually propose or we should not suggest to uh, design beyond that condition uh, for the equipment there. So, the non-dimensional cavitation number is sometimes uh, is used to actually uh, measure the uh, that is degree of cavitation and to form in a liquid. Now, that will be calculated uh, as the difference between the local pressure and the vapor pressure that will be divided by the dynamic pressure. Now, let the upstream pressure uh, not affected by the wing be here as uh, p infinity and the flow velocity is u and the saturation or vapor pressure of the liquid is considered as uh, p v. So, in that case when this pressure at a point on the wing surface or uh, you can say nearby has reached this uh, uh, this vapor pressure PV. In that case, cavitation will develop, and uh, then the degree of cavitation, that is how much, uh, that is uh, what is the intensity of that cavitation, whether uh, this pressure difference will be uh, less than or greater than that kinetic energy supplied there, and based on which the degree of cavitation will be actually calculated, and uh, it is generally expressed by this uh, cavitation number and this cavitation number is denoted by uh, this k d that will be defined as uh, p infinity minus p v by uh, rho u square by 2. So, this k d uh, in this equation is called the degree of cavitation or cavitation number you can say when k d is a small then cavitation is likely to develop. So, you have to consider that k d uh, in such way that uh, it should be not uh, less than uh, what is that uh, uh, if it is uh, less than the critical cavitation number which uh, depends on the geometry and the 
Reynolds number. So, uh, you have to consider this cavitation uh, number in such way that it should be uh, small enough if it is there, uh, but the kinetic energy also should be considered, but uh, you have to have the optimum value. So, that that P infinity should be always P V. So, if infinity is greater than P V that means, here you will see that uh, uh, P infinity will be kinetic what is the kinetic energy you have to multiply this K D and then you have to add the vapor pressure then only you have to this pressure. So, always that pressure P infinity will be equal to P V plus K D into rho u square by 2 if you are maintaining then you can get the flow without cavitation. Now, some uh, typical drag and lift coefficients and critical cavitation numbers for uh, hydrofoils uh, within the range of Reynolds number here it is given. So, in this case if the angle of attack is there if it is minus 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 accordingly the lift coefficients are given here 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 up to 1.22 here for uh, attack of angle is uh, 10. And uh, in that case uh, respective drag coefficients are also given this uh, and what will the cavitation number in this case 0 0.5 and also up to 2.5 there for this angle of cavity. So, it is important that if your angle of uh, attack is uh, 0 in that case you can have this uh, critical cavitation number as 0 0.6. So, there will be a certain value of this cavitation uh, number and because of which then you can uh, have the uh, cavitation. So, uh, if there is no cavitation what does it mean that uh, k should be equals to 0 and in that case you will see that p should be equal to p v. So, at that uh, critical condition that uh, you will see that uh, uh, there will be what is that uh, uh, p uh, almost will be equals to that is uh, uh, vapor pressure. So, in that case k d will be equal to 0. Now, uh, if we uh, represent this drag coefficient as a function of degree of cavitation how it can be there the drag coefficient of a body that experiences the cavitation that will be given by this equation number 11 that will be C d into K d uh, C d uh, that is uh, as a function of K d not into C d that will be equal to C d into uh, C d uh, C d without cavitation into 1 plus uh, K d. So, uh, interesting that uh, one is uh, C d that uh, drag coefficient at a certain cavitation and C d 0 that will be drag coefficient without cavitation and K d is equal to cavitation number or degree of cavitation here. So, in this case you have to remember that the hydrofoil and air foil type shape that is used to lift a vessel above the water surface invariably cannot operate without cavitation there. Now, drag coefficient without cavitation at uh, Reynolds number of 10 to the power 5 here some uh, that is uh, uh, drag coefficient without cavitation that can be obtained uh, for this uh, geometry that like a sphere uh, here uh, disc and circular uh, cylinder flat angle uh, two dimensional ways and cone for uh, different uh, uh, angle of attack in that case uh, respective value of drag coefficient without what is that cavitation it is there. Now, with cavitation then how it will be there uh, in that case uh, uh, how to calculate. Let us do an example in this case like suppose a 2 meter long hydrofoil with cord length of 40 centimeter that will operate 30 centimeter below the water surface uh, uh, with an angle of attack of 6 degree. Now, in that case for a speed of 60 meter per second in that case uh, uh, determine the drag and lift and decide if cavitation exits on the hydrofoil or not. So, in that case this p infinity you have to first calculate that will be rho g h plus p atmosphere at this surface of this uh, water uh, what will be the pressure in this case this will be your pressure. And then uh, assuming that the water temperature uh, is about 15 degree centigrade at that temperature vapor pressure will be 1600 Pascal and the cavitation number based on this equation number 10 we can have this. Uh, k d will be equal to p infinity minus p v by rho square by 2 that will be equal to 0 0.79 after substitution of this p infinity and p v there we are getting this uh, k d will be equals to 0 0.79. So, this is less than the critical cavitation number of 1.2 that is given in table here uh, earlier 
this 1.2 uh, this one. So, in this case we can uh, say that uh, hence the cavitation will be of course, uh, present uh, during this flow and the drag and lift force accordingly it will be calculated uh, based on this formula here 1 by 2 into C D into rho u square a. So, based on which we are getting this uh, drag force is 2 to 5 0 and F L will be equal to 97300 Newton, whereas C D and C L are given as uh, 0 0.022 and 0 0.95 respectively. So, based on this example whether uh, there will be cavitation will occurs or not very simple way you can calculate there. So, what you have to see that whether this critical cavitation number is there or not. Now, if this K D value is less than a critical uh, uh, cavitation number then you of course, uh, will expect that there will be a cavitation. So, always this cavitation number should be greater than this uh, critical uh, cavitation number. So, that you have to remember here. So, critical cavitation numbers are given here at this condition there will be a, a formation of cavitation just a start here in this case. And then uh, you have to of course, follow the uh, this cavitation number whatever cavitation number as per your design it will be greater than this critical cavitation number. So, uh, you can uh, uh, further read uh, uh, these books for uh, uh, further understanding of this phenomena of this. Uh, uh, lift and cavitation. So, thank you for this uh, lecture today.